Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business owners who are getting the move on. And our guest this week, well, she's going to teach us how in business and in life that it's okay to let the kids jump across the furniture. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Ramona Fries, the co-owner of R&D Furniture. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you very much. For visitors who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? My name is Ramona, and I am co-owner of R&D Leather Furniture, and we specialize in, just like it says, leather furniture. We're talking with Ramona today about a whole variety of different things, and I wish... The cameras have been rolling when we first started because the, this is going to be a hoot. I can already tell. The stories you've got are fantastic. <laughs> I know. I've put the bar like somewhere go. up here. Good luck, right? <laughs> it was the nun story. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not getting it. You're sorry. Not fit for television. <laughs> That's why it's none. <laughs> but we're here at R&D Furniture, and this is not something that I would think that you would normally wake up every morning and say, you know what, I'm going to open up a, a leather furniture store. No. You got your start working for Ford, did you know? I did. I was a service writer okay. at a Ford dealership. What's a service writer? Somebody brings in their car okay. and to get serviced, okay. or you know they're having a problem. Right. You would diagnose it tell them what it was going to take to fix it. They'd believe you or they didn't. <laughs> you know, I'm a young girl. <laughs> I'm just out of high school. Right. You know, I'm dressed in a red star, steel toe shoes. Right. My name, service technician. And um, this gentleman drives in and uh, he says, my car's making a weird noise. Can I talk to one of those guys? And I said, sir, you need a water pump. And uh, I want to talk to one of those guys. So the All guy right. comes over and says, sir, you need a water pump. <laughs> there you go. But uh -huh. um, I got tired of coming home dirtier than my husband. Uh, Grease under my fingernails. Right, sure. And I saw an ad right. for furniture sales right. at a local furniture store. Right. And I thought, if I can sell a water pump, I can sell a sofa. Sure. I went down and I applied for the job. And this gentleman looks at me and he says, uh, first thing you have to do is be able to carry a sofa. <laughs> you know, you got to be able to carry a sofa across the store, or carry it out the door. And I looked at him and I said, well, you grab that end and I'll grab this end. Right. If I can drop a transmission, I can move a sofa. <laughs> and he hired me. And that's how I got into the furniture business. And the furniture doesn't have 50 weight oil coming out of it, does it? It does not. <laughs> it does not. But, you know, at that time they sold, um, it was um, a McMahon store. Right. I'll never forget one time I was selling a, a television and I plugged it in and the wiring caught on fire. Oh no. So I stood back and I explained to the gentleman about the TV and I said now obviously that's not going to happen in your home because you don't have this ancient wiring in your house <laughs> and do you know what? I wrote that TV up. And so, <laughs> so that day I didn't have to carry a sofa, I just had to carry a TV. And you worked for McMahon's for how long? I worked for McMahon's Furniture for about 11 years. Okay. I became one of their top salespeople. Right. And the gentleman that had actually hired me from McMahon's opened his own store oh, okay. in the Royal Grandy. And he stole you. He stole me. <laughs> he stole me. And um, I ended up managing his store. Okay. He had, I mean, it was a huge store. Right. And it was 30,000 square feet, 17 employees. Right. And um, and you did that for how many years? Fifteen years. Twelve plus fifteen. I know. I started when I was six, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> and you know, and I went into leather because you know the conditioners and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, straight up for wrinkles. But um, 
I learned the business inside and out. Right. You know, a, a good friend in the furniture industry right. that I used to share time with said, you know, Ramona was an older gentleman, and he said, if you want to be good in the business that you're doing, and if you want to go in and do your own business, you're the first one in, you're the last one to leave. Right. And I made sure I did that. And I, I made sure that every morning I went in, I knew what was in stock. I knew what we had so that when that customer came through the door and they needed something, I could say, oh, I know what you need. Right. Let's put this there. Right. So right. in the meantime, with working with him at that store, I met my husband. Right. He was in the oil business. And he took me to Tunisia, North Africa. Now, the last time I checked, uh, there's not a lot of employers that will let you keep your job if you leave for two, two and a half years. No. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, when I came back, um, he wanted me to come back, but I just didn't want to do those kind of hours. Right. And so my husband was like, well, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm not going to stay home and make cookies. Right. So I said, you know, let's specialize. Let's sell a product that nobody is selling at a price that nobody's selling it for. I chose the line I chose because I wanted to sell something I didn't have to service. Ah. I wanted a good line. In 1996, right. We opened R and D Leather Furniture, and R and D stands for Ramona and Don. And Don is my husband. And when Don does not come to the store, I bring my <laughs> dog, and it stands for Ramona and Dog. <laughs> Sometimes it's both Ramona and Double D. <laughs> because I bring Don and the dog. Don and the dog. What what kind of dog? Jack Russell. Ah, he's just a little terror all over the place. He is. But you know what? <laughs> leather furniture. <laughs> you know, people always say, I'll get leather when the kids have gone and the pets have died. And right. it's like, no, no, no. That's when you need it. For visioneers who aren't familiar with the Omnia line that you have here at R&D mm. Furniture, discuss how this can fit in, not in just into their home, but also into their business, their office, and, and that sort of thing. Okay. We specialize in one line. Right. Omnia leather. It's made in Chino, California. So it's a U.S. made? U.S.A. made product. I am very big on U.S.A. made. Right. Style, selection, service. Anything that we sell can come in any configuration. Right. So sofa, four-seat sofa, five-seat sofa, sectional. Right. Uh, reclining sofas, sleeper sofas. I mean, whatever you want they will make for us sure and we do it to fit your room in the color that you want right and because it's made in california i get it faster and it is 100 percent cowhide there is a difference in what they're selling out there but it is 100 percent cowhide i mean like you got a cowhide here on the wall the average sofa takes nine of those and wow. people don't realize that, but you know what? It's the most durable upholstery right. on the furniture market. When people are replacing fabric sofas, the average consumer replaces a fabric sofa every three to five years. Right. Ours is lasting four, five times that. Ah, 15, 20 years? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. If visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They can come to 6801 White Lane. There it is. <laughs> Bakersfield. Or they can go to our website, okay. rndleather.com. Now, is it R-A-N-D or R, R in the answer? It's spelled side? out, r-a-n-d-d-leather.com. And when we come back, we're going to talk about something that has been really popular with a lot of visioneers. We've been getting questions like this like crazy, and Ramona's going to be talking about when is enough enough? enough. Yes. And we're going to talk about that when we come right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Hugh Beatty, the Wellness Dot, also known as TWD. If you find that you have aging skin, suffer with facial acne, as well as wrinkles. The different things that I can do for you is Botox, chemical pills, facial fillers, as well as PRP. This can bring back that youthfulness so you can perform better at your business. Please come see me, Dr. Hugh Beatty, The Wellness Doc. Reach out to Hugh Beatty, MD, The Wellness Doc 
at 661-395-0315. That's 661-395-0315. Or visit them online at hughbatymd.com. That's H-U-G-H-B-E-A-T-T-Y-M-D.com. I'm here with Ramona Fries, the co-owner of R&D Leather Furniture. And our vision or question comes from Brandy who asks, we are understaffed and super busy and I haven't taken a day off in months. But business is great. Mm. But there's too much to do. At what point do you say enough is enough? You know, that's a really, really good question. At when we started our business, mm -hmm. we opened our first store in Santa Maria. In fact, um, it was 1980 South Broadway next to the Hiking <laughs> Viking. I'll never forget that because <laughs> there was the parking lot and then there was the um, car dealership. We specialize in leather, so I don't have to have big locations. Right. And we were doing so good in Santa Maria that uh, my husband said, we need to open another store. And so we opened a store in Pismo Beach and we started doing really good in that store. And my husband said, we need to open another store. And so we opened a store in Santa Barbara. In between doing all of that, we would do these hotel sales. I got this idea that, you know, in specializing, there's not a lot of people selling good leather furniture. Right. So we would go to different cities. We'd rent the ballrooms or a convention center have the factory meet us with two 18-wheelers, load it up, go home empty. And we did that in Bakersfield. Right. We would come to, it was now uh, Rabobank, but at the time it was Holiday Inn Select. The Merchants Bank Theater. Yes, yes, there we go. Okay, I would hold these hotel sales. Right. And people were like, you know, we need a leather furniture store in Bakersfield. Right. And I'm like, oh no, you know, I've got three stores now, you know, don't need another store. We'll keep coming over. We're on the coast. Right. And my husband leaves. I see him walking out the door and he goes, I'm going to go find a location. And I said, Don Freeze, do not. And he goes, <laughs> so as he's walking towards the door, I'm going, I'm not going to pay over a dollar a foot. And so he comes back. <laughs> He comes back with this contract in this old Sherwin-Williams building. Right. It was 98 cents. <laughs> it wasn't a dollar. <laughs> and we opened a store in Bakersfield. Right. Now, she said, you know, business is good. I haven't taken a day off. Right. I worked two years without a day off, and we worked six years without a vacation. Wow. I'll never forget, because I was driving back and forth to Bakersfield. My husband was driving, we lived in Pismo Beach. Right. My husband was driving to the Santa Barbara store. Right. I had a manager in Santa Maria and I had a manager in the Pismo store. Right. And we were doing great. Right. Okay. Financially. Financially. And the thing that you find out is that people shop. Well, the people from Santa Barbara were shopping Santa Maria because for some reason they thought it'd be cheaper in Santa Maria. And you know, so one day I drive home from Bakersfield and I'm sitting in the living room with my husband and a car commercial comes on and I said, why are they advertising a dealership in Santa Maria in Bakersfield? And Don just looked at me and said, Ramona, you're in Pismo. And so we just looked at each other. You had no idea where you were. I, I, you know, let me answer that question by saying this. There comes a point when you have to say, why am I doing this? Right. Why am I doing this? And seriously, how much do I need? So at that point, I just had, you know, we just sat down and had an honest conversation. And I said, I love selling this furniture. I don't mind working seven days a week, but I would like to take some time off. But um, am I doing this for us or am I doing it for everybody else? And we decided 
to just close the other stores because I didn't want to sell my business. Right. We had built up a reputation for selling a good product, servicing what we sell. Right. Listen, I love Bakersfield. Right. I have lived all over. Because you could have stayed on the coast. I could have stayed the, on the coast. The weather's perfect. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> no. I'd wake up in the fog. I'd go home to the fog. Right. The wind would come up in the middle of the day. I'm telling you, I love Bakersfield. <laughs> and the people in Bakersfield are nice. The city of Bakersfield was growing, right. and we decided to come to Bakersfield. And we had the store. We were at a different location. We were there for 17 years. We moved to this location 14 years ago, right. and I found out what it was like to take a day off, to take a week now and then, and just enjoy what we were doing again. Do you own the building? No, we rent. Why did you choose to rent the buildings and not buy the buildings? Okay. At first, it was the cost and wanting to set up business. You have to wait for the building to come up. Right. We were ready to do the business. I had the inventory. People already knew us, so I needed a shell to put the furniture in. And you needed it fast. We needed it fast, so we rented. Right. Not a bad process. Right. So in the meantime, we purchased a house. Right. And the idea was that we would finance our own building, right. okay? Sure. Because we had a ton of equity in our house. Right. And, but then again, at that time, that's when the housing mark boom and right. the economy. And so we just weren't able to purchase something at that time. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, this yes, is a no, and, and that's, a, that's a legitimate a legitimate question. Because it's one of those kind of things where you've been in business for yes. 200 years. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. Leather conditioners. And at some point, you start looking at yes. what you're paying in rent. Yes. When you sit there and look at the cost of maintaining a building and right. start doing that cost-benefit analysis. Yes. And, and so that's why I was thinking... And again, it's sitting down and it's drawing it out on the paper right. and going... Why am I doing this? Uh, and for how long do I want to do it for? Because if you wanted to close up shop next week, you could. I could. And I wouldn't be concerned about having to, to we have gr a great landlord, but you know, they've got to worry about their, uh, their business being based on occupancy. Right. And so I, that was just something I didn't want to have to worry about. That wasn't why I was getting into it. You know, <laughs> we've been in business in Bakersfield since uh, 1998. Right. One of my favorite things is um, a couple that, uh, that used to be in Bakersfield. Uh, they had a business in Bakersfield, and right. they had this little guy. Uh -huh. And whenever he came in, he would take his shoes off and he would just start running the lines of sofas, bouncing over the sofas and bouncing <laughs> over the arms. And one time he falls on the sofa and his little legs come up and his tube socks are hanging like little rabbit ears, you know, and his mom and dad are like mortified because this kid is running across my sofa. And I was just laughing. Right because the joy that he was having. But you know, I just looked at him and I said, you know, if it doesn't hold up in my showroom, it's not gonna hold up in your living room. And they ended up buying some furniture. Now, Visioneers, you may recognize that last week's guest was John Slicker and yes. he referred to Ramona. And he talked about his start with her and the things that he learned. And when we come back, we're going to learn straight from the horse's mouth on the lesson she taught John when we come right back. The reason we're talking with Ramona Fries, the co-owner of R&D Leather Furniture, is because of a visioner question that came from a visioner just like you. We had a visioner that wanted to find out when is enough enough. 
So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about here on Small Business Celebration, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Ramona Fries, the co-owner of R&D Furniture, and our visionary question comes from Ed who asks, how do you illustrate to a prospective employee that commission-based sales has a higher upside than hourly sales, which is considered quote-unquote safe? You, you ask them how much they believe in themselves. I mean, how much faith do you have in yourself and seeing yourself succeed, okay? Uh, right. If, if you just see yourself making minimum wage, I mean, like now, I don't want to talk politics, but now our governor's talking about a $22 minimum wage right. for fast food. In California, right? In California. Well, is that how you see yourself succeeding in life? Or do you want to say, I'm going to succeed because I can do this. Right. I have a gentleman that works for me. Right. All right. His name is Jose. Intelligent. Intelligent man. Right. And because of the relationship that we have with the factory that we have, um, if there's a problem, Jose can fix it, but then if he starts to notice something that it's, a, you know, like, oh, I've seen this before, I've seen this before, I've seen this before. Right. He gets on the phone, he calls the factory, he talks to the gentleman that's in charge of the manufacturing side of it, and they fix it so that no other dealers are going to have that problem. Right. And in fact, he did that so well that Omnia used... I'm going to say my Jose because I'm taking ownership of it. <laughs> right, right. Used my guy to help write a service manual to, for their other stores. But see, he knew what he could do and he applied himself. So if you apply yourself, you are much better than minimum wage. Let me tell you a story about Jose. Sure, fire away. I had this lady that was like an aunt to the store. Right. Now this has got nothing to do with furniture. And, I, and so, it was Jose's birthday. Okay. And she was from Oklahoma. Uh-huh. So she made him this sheet cake. Nice. And so she brings it into the store and she opens it and she shows me. And it has H-O-S-E-Y on it. <laughs> I and his said, name is spelled? J-O-S-E. <laughs> and so I said, why did you put Jose? She goes, no, it's Jose. <laughs> and Jose <laughs> comes up and goes, don't worry, it's my cake. And from then on, he had the nickname Jose. <laughs> and we still call him that every once in a while. Come here, Jose, I got a question. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, that was just precious. Sure, sure, sure. You know, I think, I think the thing that we get <laughs> the most satisfaction out of is somebody coming in and saying, I have this problem and I can't, you know, this is what I have in mind and I want to make this work. And so we try and take what they're visioning. Right. And, you know, we sit down and say, well, first of all, how are you going to use this? Right. Okay, how many people are in the house? Right. You know, how much do you entertain? And, right. and then we have fun with them picking out what actually will work in their room. Right. And, you know, and I had this one lady. Right. She, she wanted, she had red walls, black and white tile. Okay. And she ordered this sectional. One part of it was red, one part of it was black, and then she interchanged the cushions. Okay. And you know what? The customer loves it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, it, listen, is it what I would have done in my house? No. No, but you know what? 
everybody has different tastes. Right. And that's what you do. Right. You fill their tastes right. and not yours. And I think that's one thing that a designer, you know, like I've told people, you have 10 different designers, right. 10 different opinions. That's why mine's free. <laughs> so, you know, you can go out the door and say, oh my gosh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's blowing smoke. Okay, fine. Right. But you know, I've got more people that come in and go, oh my gosh, you know, you suggested that yellow. I had this customer, she came in and, and she showed me her pictures and I said, can I tell you something? This butter would be gorgeous in there. Right. And her husband's looking at me and I said, just trust me. Right. Please just trust me on this. So when it got delivered, the lady called me crying and she sent me pictures and she says, I cannot believe how this worked out. And so, you know, sometimes you just got to go with it. It's a water pump. It is. And sometimes <laughs> you know when to let it go. <laughs> What makes you wake up every morning and open up your business? Uh, going back to the question, why am I doing this? Mm. I enjoy what I do. I am not a person that has um, a lot of outside activity. You know, I don't have any hobbies, really. You know, I'm not, I don't collect things. I don't paint rocks. You know, right. <laughs> I walk my dog. Right. So, um I enjoy talking to that person that's going to come through my front doors because everybody's different. They always have a different need. It's always a different situation. It's individuals and I just enjoy helping them. Ramona, thank you for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. This has been a treat. Thank you. And if visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They call me at 661-833-8166 or again on the website or just come to the store. I mean, there's Where's the, where are we at? 6801 White Lane, Bakersfield. Listen. Nothing beats the feel of real leather and nobody beats our prices. And I'll be right back with my final thought. Hi, I'm Dr. Hugh Beatty, the Wellness Doc, also known as TWD. If you find that you have aging skin, suffer with facial acne, as well as wrinkles, the different things that I can do for you is Botox, chemical pills, facial fillers, as well as PRP. This can bring back that youthfulness so you can perform better at your business. Please come see me, Dr. Hugh Beatty, The Wellness Doc. Reach out to Hugh Beatty, MD, The Wellness Doc at 661-395-0315. That's 661-395-0315. Or visit them online at hughbeattymd.com. That's H-U-G-H-B-E-A-T-T-Y-M-D.com. Skipping across the furniture. Earlier in this episode, Ramona talks about how she allows kids to take off their shoes and go skipping across her furniture, often much to the chagrin and consternation of the kids' parents. But why does she allow them to do this? Well, it's as she explained, the furniture she sells is strong. It's well built. It's got a thick skin and it holds up to the everyday trials of life. It allows kids to be kids, to play, to have fun, to enjoy themselves. It also got me to thinking about us, our personalities, our personal constitution. Do we have a constitution that is also strong and well-built? Does it give us a thick skin? that allows us to hold up to the everyday trials of life and allow kids to be kids. This also begs the question about our businesses as well. Are they strong? Do they have a thick skin? And yet, do they have enough constitution, enough support in life to allow kids to be kids? After all, what is the reason you're building your business? 
a foundation, something that's strong, something that can give you a thick skin. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Ramona Fries, the co-owner of R&D Leather Furniture, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week. The reason we're here is, well, we got a whole thing. The reason we're here is we're talking to Ramona. <laughs> we're trying to talk to <laughs> We're Ramona. trying to talk to This is all going to end up in the credits, of course, you know. Yes, <laughs> this yes. is all the fun stuff. <clears throat> anyway, but we're talking. We have furniture in the Pentagon. Really? Yes. A gentleman came in. His wife was stationed at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Right. We took care of her. Um, he calls me on the telephone. He called me Susie for some reason. And uh, he said, do you remember me? I said, yes, sir. You're the gentleman that had all that stuff on your cap. And he said, yes. And he goes, you know what? I want furniture for my office and the girls can't go out and find what I had from you. And he says, so what you sold my wife, I want for my office. And I said, how are we going to get it there, sir? And he does. Don't you worry about that, Susie. I'll get it to you. You know. So and he did. So if there's one thing the military knows how to do is logistics. get it there. Exactly. Get it there. Get it there. <laughs>